Robert, um, you were talking about grid. So um, before we talk about the merge, kind of like the merger. So last season, how, how did it go for you guys? Um, it didn't go great. <laughs> um, we had some just freak accidents happen. Um, I feel like this is the second year in a row that that's happened, but um, we just, I'll say, I'll say this. We, this year, I'm a little bit, I'm more excited this year because we, we just kind of cleaned house. Um, we had to, I'm just going to say this politely. We just, we only want team players on our team. We can't have individually minded players because that shit spreads like a cancer. And yep. that's what happened this past season. And we're like, we can't have that. So I, I think what sometimes happens is you have like individual players that come to a team um, and they just, they can't, the team doesn't revolve around them or what they want. It might not be what's best for the team and they maybe can't handle that yeah. or they, you know, so yeah. And I, I have to do what's best for the team. So if it's not that, then we can't have them back. So yeah. I'm excited to see, we have some studs coming to our combine, our tryout this Sunday. So I can't wait to see that. But yeah, I mean, this past season wasn't, wasn't great. Um, we did have some really good moments, but, you know, I mean, we didn't, obviously we always want to win the whole thing. And when you don't, it's kind of like, kind of like the Bills when they never win the Super Bowl, you know? So, but um, yeah, so I think, I think this year we're going to be in a much better, um, like, like team state. Cause we were in a great, like at the end of this past at the end of 2022, we were in, so, even though like we had um, somebody get injured, so like we were in such a good mindset. And then unfortunately this past year, there was just a couple players who didn't get a lot of playing time or they just thought this thing should be a certain way when it wasn't. And they just, they got upset and yeah. So we had to just kind of be like, listen, not working out. We're going to clean houses and get team, uh, team players who understand like the overall goal. So mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, I'd rather take new people that don't even know what grid is that are coachable and like moldable and they understand, like, I'll do whatever you need. Yes. Great. Um, to, to mold those people than you know, dealing with like individual egos that just don't mesh well with the team. Yeah. I I've noticed that like, obviously grids, grids, a team sport and it's not like an individual sport. So people mm -hmm. that like are so used to doing CrossFit on their own. And if they don't have like a team's background at all, or they yeah. thought, or like, they were like, really like they were a starter all four years in like high school and college or, or whatever, like, and they think they yeah. just need to start. They just, it, it's, they, they need They need the red They need a reality check when they do go to yeah. something completely new. And so, yeah. yeah, I mean, when I was in college, I wasn't expecting to start. I was like, I was like, okay, whatever. If it, you know, I'm just, I'm just here. I'm here to play. If you need me for anything like special teams, whatever I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm here. So, but yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of tough. Like, so how do, when you, when you get people on the team, do you do like, like interviews, like, almost like interviews and stuff just to say, like, just to see if it's even worth entertaining the idea that to have them on your team? Yeah. Like there's a couple different processes. So like if they're local, we'll hopefully see them in person, get to like, not even tell them they're being interviewed, but we kind of get like a vibe from them. Like, Hey, how do you operate? Like, Hey, can you show us these tests? See how they interact with the team. Um, and we can, we can usually get a good, like when you see them once or twice or interact with them, we can kind of get a vibe of them. and like, Hey, are you going to mesh well, not mesh well? Uh, and stuff like that. If they're not local, it's a little bit trickier because you're not seeing them in person. Um, and sometimes we, sometimes we pick wrong, you know, and it just, that happens or sometimes somebody's really good at just faking being a team player and then they end up not being, um, that doesn't happen very often, you know, but like most, and we had a couple of situations last year where we were, um, we were down a couple players and had to sign three girls, um, for the last two batches. And we lucked out cause we had this one girl, Jocelyn, who, um, super strong girl, we needed a strength girl. And she, she's like, yeah, I'll come try out. We just had like a little mini tryout and she was like, I'll do whatever you want. I'll do whatever you need. And she was super coachable. I was like, I love you. You are in. Um, and then we actually had two of our kid grid players, um, come up, Ari and Bella that were, um, 17, one of them just turned 18. They played up for the first time in like grid season history. So that oh, was wow. sick because yeah, we had like a little farm team situation going on. Um, and I was lucky cause I already knew them. I already knew they knew grid. I knew their personalities. I knew that, you know, they would mesh well. Um, so yeah, for the most part, we try to meet them in person, um, and kind of get a good vibe from them first. And we explained to them like, Hey, you're not get, Don't expect to be in every single race. Don't expect like you are on a team. We try to explain it as best we can. And some people are like, Ooh, I need to, I need special this, that we're like, all right, you know, maybe it's not for you. And other people are like, I'll do whatever you want, you know? So you can, you can get that. You can kind of feel that vibe from people pretty well. 
Yeah. And, and I've heard there's like, you can get like maybe like a person just to do like one thing, which is like burpees to touch the rings. And like, that's, that's their whole yeah. job and that's it. Yeah. So it, that used to be a lot more, um, eminent, like in the MPGL, you would have a player that's literally, you have one race you're in all year, but it's such a like specific specialty that like no one else can do it. And they're like, yep, this is all you do. And that's it. Um, uh, it's a, we don't really have that many people that are only doing maybe one thing all season, but that burpee to that nine foot, nine inch burpee to ring touch that will win or lose you the whole, the sprint relay, which is worth three points, sometimes four, if they throw a bonus flag that could mm. change the whole match. And it's like, it could be going well. And then all of a sudden they miss one or they hit it out of the, and it's game over. Um, but yeah, there's, this is not a team sport where everybody plays the same. It's not where like we've had players and this was one of the problems we had last year. Where maybe a player was used to being one of the more prominent players and, but maybe things change and we have, you want depth on your team. Like you don't want someone to have to be in every single race because by the end of it, they're probably tired where somebody fresh coming in would be more effective. Yeah. Um, so like uh, the first couple of seasons, I had to be in every single race, every single race. And um, then the past couple of seasons, I kind of got a little bit of a break and I was like, all right, this is nice. Um, but then like last season when we got, had some people got hurt or whatever, they couldn't make it. I had to go back to being in it. And I don't necessarily like that all the time. I'm dead tired by the time some of the harder races come up at the end. So it's like, we're trying to get more people in this season. So we don't have to have several players being in all the races um, just because it's not, you want to have people that are fresh towards the end mm -hmm. of the the match when everybody else is kind of like going down so yeah yeah so since being the owner and, and co-captain so i i know i've i looked at the grid website and so a lot of the different teams have podcasts as well so does the brigade have their own podcast nope Dude. definitely not no okay. all right <laughs> Yeah, we would. That'd be awesome. We don't have enough manpower for that, but um, I mean, that would be cool. I usually I just kind of like I did one this morning, uh, or like I'll just do random podcasts, just explaining to people what grid is, how it's going. So, but we don't have like a dedicated one to our team. I think the sharks, the sharks, I know have one or had one or have one. I don't know if it's still, it probably still exists. Um, I don't know what what other teams um have it on there, but yeah, I think a couple of them definitely do. Yeah, I, I mean. It's, it's really not that hard to do a podcast. <laughs> it's really not. It's really not. Um, yeah. But yeah. It's pretty easy. I mean, if you really want to do one, I can, I can show you the, I can show you the way. So, all right, so I got YouTube and I got podcasts. All right. I'm going to get on yeah. all that stuff. I'm going to join the, the, the 21st century here. <laughs> yeah. 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 So um, with, so obviously the big news came out a little while ago that they're, they're merging. Um, I, so is it and now, and now is it the NG um, NGPL league or like what, what, what is it considered now? So yeah, the MPGL was back in the day. That was um like 2000, I want to say seven. That was our, yeah, yeah, early. Yeah, that was so that is no more. This is completely separate. Although one of the guys that used to um run one of the teams, uh Mather Rizwell, he's the one that started the uh almost said MPGL, the Florida Grid League. Um yeah. so we have just changed the name to United Grid League That's um right. simply because of the growth we've had over the past four years, like 2020 just it went crazy. Everybody was on their phones and on their computers all the time, just started watching all the reels and then everything went crazy. Um, and we have T we have players from all over the country. We even have a player from Colombia. Like it's not just, oh, wow. it started out in 2017. We were all super local. We were all in like the Tampa Orlando area. There was a couple, maybe one random person here and there. But we were all within like, I don't know, a 30, 50 mile radius. Now we have players from, Texas, Georgia, California, uh, Pennsylvania, New York, like everywhere. So it's, it doesn't really make sense to make it the Florida grid league anymore. We actually, one of our teams just changed from the Gainesville wild to the Atlanta wild. So yeah. now we actually have a team that's outside of Florida. So they're in Georgia now. So it's the Florida name just felt very like exclusive and maybe that's not the right word, but like very small and limited and people all the time, like, Oh, do we have to be in Florida to play? And it's like, no, you can be from anywhere. So we needed something that would, explain that a little bit better like hey and united also came from the idea of it's a co-ed league guys and girls play on the same team it's all different body types all different types of people different backgrounds um so it's just like we're all kind of united in this one thing this like one like family of hey we like to fitness really fast and and we're all really competitive so yeah that's awesome so what what was the game plan of of the wild moving to atlanta compared to I like staying think, in florida i think most of the players are from atlanta Okay. Like in that area. So it just didn't make, cause originally the team was, um, I believe the team was owned by somebody else and they were in the Jacksonville area. 
And then over the last couple of years, more players, there wasn't really many people in Jacksonville. So it really didn't make sense for them to have that name anymore. Um, and a lot of their players are more in that Atlanta, Georgia area. So they're like, let's just fix it. So, mm-hmm. so do they have a, do they have a gym or like an area where they're actually doing the competition in Atlanta? Do they have that already set up? You think? You mean like for our, the matches throughout the league or yeah, the season? Correct. Yeah. Uh, so the matches are at um, like we we've been growing for this too because we used to have our matches at Valor Fitness um, in Tampa and then mm-hmm. also like that would be the North matches for the, the four North teams and then the South would have their matches in the South for the four South teams. Lately, in the past three three seasons, I want to say um, we've been having our matches at like big ass expos. So it's not necessarily like in the cities of the teams; it's where these expos are. So our usual usually our season opener is at the USA Fit expo which is in orlando and then we have one at the miami last year we had the miami international fitness expo in miami um we had our playoffs we had one at mr olympia this year because it was in orlando so we all of our matches were at these big expos with like forty thousand plus people at them um we still had one match at, at at valor fitness still so it was a local tampa um event as well but we're we're trying to get into these bigger venues because we're we're growing there's more people more eyes on the sport you know people are walking by like what the heck is that and they just like <laughs> you know they never heard of us but they're seeing these yeah. people flip around on rings and lifting ridiculous weights and they're like i want to watch that so yeah, yeah. so it's, it doesn't matter like the matches don't necessarily happen in the cities it's just where um where we can get the venues at the at the expos and the exposure and stuff like that okay and i've i've noticed on youtube as well as like tiktok and those other platforms that like the grid grid like following has gotten absolutely yeah huge just ridiculous so, yeah, yeah. And, it, and it's like just looking from where you guys first started like even even a year ago when i when i yeah. talk, like a little over a year ago when i talked to you it was like from then to to now it's like nuts man it's, i yeah. remember we just because we're looking we're looking for team sponsors if anyone wants to t- sponsor our team um and i'm sending out these emails with those stats and it was like 2017 we started with like a couple thousand followers and like maybe a couple hundred people at the venues and now across all their social media it's over a million followers and tens of thousands of people it's just it's nuts covid something happened and it just skyrocketed their mm-hmm. followers went just because we used to have like be like four thousand followers and now it's just insane every time they tag me in a video i'm like oh god here we go because it's just like notification 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 and half of them are good half of them are bad i'm just like whatever works they're getting people are seeing grid that's all i care about they can make fun of it or love it whatever yeah and and it's like like me watching it is like you all all you guys are like so fast paced and it's just like like because that because that's the competition to go as fast as possible or like you know and do whatever and it's like people are not really getting it no and understanding at it. all that, that's the problem at all. especially with like doing like butterfly pull up butterfly pull-ups like even just even just doing a video of that i got yeah. like so much hate for that oh of course then, because nobody yeah because it's floppy full and that's not real pull off blah 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 i get yeah, it i get it yeah and so they see like you doing like toes to bar to chest to bar and then like to, to a muscle up and they're like how how is what like what is yeah. that and the so, best was um i think my friend was my teammate was doing toes to bar oh, i think she was doing, she was either doing i think she was doing toes to bar and so i was like those aren't real pull-ups we're like you fucking idiot they're toes to bar but she was going so fast and she's so short so like her range of motion is really small and she does like this pull um like this kind of like it's like a little early pull but it shortens the range of it makes it more efficient and she's doing toes to bar and people are like those aren't real pull-ups we're like what are you talking about you yeah. know and it's like people don't understand this is oh that's not good training you'll never you're gonna hurt like this isn't training this is the sport like this is the sport this is not the training the training happens that's the boring stuff the slow stuff this is the yeah people won't get it we just stopped i used to like respond to everything like you don't now i'm like you'll never understand if you don't yeah. get it you'll never understand yeah yeah and i would literally take the the chest bar pull up like the butterfly pull up like uh thing from crossfit and literally copy and paste it onto the the reply message yeah and, and they're like oh crossfit's stupid i'm like okay all right yeah that's my favorite too when people are like they'll respond to a video on the grid page like crossfit's dumb i'm like good thing this isn't crossfit but please tell me you don't know what you're like continue to be mad about a sport you don't understand yeah even course. talking to people about crossfit they're like you know so that's why like one of the videos i have pinned are like me doing butterfly chest bar because i'm like oh because we can't do real ones and then i'm repping out 45 pound plate between my legs but nobody wants to you know 
they just don't get it. And I try to explain it like it's about efficiency. It's about, you know, blah, blah, blah. But nobody, yeah, they just want to yeah. flap their gums. Yep. Nobody cares. Nobody cares yeah. at all.